Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Parish Church in Bill Ricca, a Unitarian Universalist welcoming congregation. Whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome here this morning. And we invite you to stay after the service to chat either online or um, downstairs for a bit of coffee. Um, this is a hybrid service, so we are meeting online and here, and I think pretty much everybody is online today because they want to probably go out later and whatnot. Um, my name is Brita. I'll be the worship assistant for today's service. And our worship leader this morning is uh, Reverend Nanine Gowdy. Uh, she was our minister for a number of years and has uh, preached once a month uh, for us for many years after that. She is just wonderful. She is just a font of wisdom. She has uh, so much experience and has been so wonderful um, uh, with her uh, sermons uh, for us. And we're very, very happy to have her with us here this morning. Um, we'd like to begin by acknowledging that First Parish Church was built on the unceded land of the Pawtucket and Massachusetts peoples. We acknowledge the connection that they have continued to maintain with the land here in this place we call Bill Ricca. And we recognize the hardships they have endured and commit ourselves to caring for the land and for fostering good relationships with our good um, indigenous neighbors. Let's join together in the words which are in your order of service for the chalice lighting. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather together in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. In Time of Silver Rain by Langston Hughes. In time of silver rain, the earth puts forth new life again. Green grasses grow and flowers lift their heads. And all over the plain, the wonder spreads of life, of life, of life. In time of silver rain, the butterflies lift silken wings to catch a rainbow cry. And trees put forth new leaves to sing in joy beneath the sky. When spring and life are new. Let's join together in singing hymn number 44, We Sing of Golden Mornings. Um, I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that that hymn was written by Ralph Waldo Emerson 
in whose pulpit I am privileged to preach. Let's join together in the affirmation of faith, which is in your order of service. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity and fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. Thank you, Jewel. Forty years ago, when I had my ordination, my cousin sang Spirit of Life. Four years ago, when we had Elisa's memorial service, my daughter-in-law, with her beautiful operatic voice, sang Spirit of Life. Earth Mother by Starhawk. Earth Mother, Star Mother, you who are called by a thousand names, may all remember we are cells in your body and dance together. You are the grain and the loaf that sustains us each day. And as you are patient with our struggles to learn, 
so shall we be patient with ourselves and each other. We are radiant light and sacred dark, the balance. You are the embrace that heartens and the freedom beyond fear. Within you, we are born, we grow, live, and die. You bring us around the circle to rebirth. Within us, you dance forever. Our Unitarian Universalist churches are self-supporting. Your gifts of time, faith, love, and of money is what sustains the work of the church. Um, of course, you can mail in a donation um, or you can go online. Um, uh, it, it's very easy uh, to, to donate and the morning's offering will now be taken and gratefully accepted. Once upon a time, in a land in the Middle East, which gave us the beginnings of Judaism and Christianity, there was an even earlier religion. It has come to be known as goddess worship. The goddesses that were worshiped in the, that area went by many, many names, Gaia, Isis, Diana, Lilith, Iris, Inanna, and many, many more. Most of the goddesses were symbols of fertility and abundance. People then believed that if their crops were good, the goddess was blessing them. And if they were bad, they were out of her favor. In some places, one goddess represented all of the abundance of the earth, while in other locations, different goddesses had their own area of supervision, one for crops, another for the hunt, another for fertility, etc. It was common for households to have a collection of goddess figures just inside the doorway as protection for the family. There was always a little niche shelf that was reserved for that purpose. When people worshiped a female figure, the human rulers were often female also. Whether your supreme being is male or female seems to matter to folks in the way they live their daily lives. The period of history in which the goddesses were worshipped 
was generally a time of peace. There weren't large armies trying to conquer other lands. Burning witches hadn't been invented yet, and energies were concentrated on prospering through better crops, healthy children, and fruitful hunts. In terms of human history, this period lasted longer than Judeo-Christian history has. We don't have extensive records of the lengthy time of goddess worship because in that time, few people were literate. What has survived is an extensive collection of goddess figures, some of which I have been fortunate enough to see in locations of former goddess worship in Turkey, Greece, and in large museums in England, France, Russia, Mexico, and the United States. The most common representation of the goddess is as a very plump pregnant woman. The oldest figurine that has been found so, so far, which represents a goddess, is over 7,000 years old. Since goddess worship is older than that, we may yet find more. When Judaism developed, the leaders felt they had to get rid of goddess worship so people would worship the one true God instead. Women became a source of evil. Eve leading Adam astray, Lot's wife turning to salt because she disobeyed her husband, Salome using sex to influence the king by dancing in her veils, witches casting spells, etc., etc., etc. Goddess worship became idolatry, heathen, heathenism, paganism, and needed to be stomped, stoned, or otherwise ended. The only bright light in this march to controlling women was during the time of Jesus. He was roundly criticized in his day for allowing women to be in his inner circle, for allowing them to touch him, for defending their behavior. But after his death, his good work in this area was undone by Paul who said that if a woman had a question in church, she should be quiet and ask her husband. The only concession the Christian church has made towards people's desire for a female connection in worship has been to elevate, elevate Mary, the mother of Jesus. In a big concession, people were allowed to pray directly to Mary. This was especially true in regions that were heavily into goddess worship, like Mexico. There were places in Mexico that I visited where it seemed the people prayed to Mary more than they prayed to God or Jesus. People throughout the ages who have witnessed nature's bounty seem to have an urge to venerate women because we are such an obvious connection to renewed life and the continuation of generations. Keeping this under control has at times been difficult for the male hierarchy. Since we women hold so much power in our bodies, I suppose it is to be expected that those who covet power would want to control ours. It has taken thousands of years for us to go from the goddess who represents the mother of us all to where we are today, someone who will lead men astray as Eve did which is ironic 
since we are also supposed to be weaker, inferior beings. I, we know that history is written by the victors. So I think it is time for us to re-examine what we have been taught. Yes, Eve disobeyed God and ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge. Maybe she was curious. Maybe she was tired of being told what to do. Maybe she was hungry. She didn't hog tie Adam and force him to eat. Yet for this act, she has been blamed for single-handedly bringing about the downfall of the human race, bringing sin into the world. Yes, Lot's wife disobeyed her husband and looked back at the town where she had lived all of her life as it was being destroyed. She was leaving friends and family behind. Maybe she was curious. Maybe she was tired of being told what to do. Maybe she just wanted one last goodbye look. For thousands and thousands of years, women were killed for being witches. We now realize that they were killed because they had power. Some were widows who controlled their own lives and had no man telling them what to do. Some were healers or midwives with the power to make people better or knew how to bring new life into the world. And some just wouldn't obey what the men told them to do, the hussies. Unitarian Universalists are very good about questioning what we are told, male and female alike. But it isn't enough for just you use to do the questioning. Knowing our human history so that we can help those who don't know the full story to see the injustices that have been done is extremely important. There is a lot of supposed history that needs correcting. Today is Mother's Day. The original Mother's Day was proposed by Anna Jarvis in 1908 as a day of peace, a day to stop all wars. Had she been heeded, we might have brought about the peaceful period of goddess worship back. But instead, Mother's Day has become a hallmark moment dedicated to motherhood and apple pie. The way the holiday has changed mirrors the path from goddess worship to the all-powerful male deity. After all, the military industrial complex can't make money out of peace. In the tens of thousands of years since the start of goddess worship, we have not achieved the peace, love, and understanding we claim we want. I think it is time to reverse course. We could do worse than believing in Mother Gaia, the belief that the living and non-living components of Earth are one, that they function as a single system, and the living components, mainly we humans, regulate and maintain conditions, such as the temperature of the ocean, and the composition of the atmosphere so as to be suitable for life. If we had had this belief system all along, we wouldn't be facing the climate crisis we are currently in. If we lived in a time before scientific knowledge, we would say that the gods were punishing us for floods, 
wildfires, tornadoes, and other unnatural disasters. But we know better. We humans have only ourselves to blame. The only good news is that it is still possible if we stop abusing nature to have sustainable life. But we are close to the point of no return. Over a hundred years ago, when Anna Jarvis proposed a Mother's Day for peace, that might have saved us if they had followed through. Now we need more than a ceasefire. We have healing to do to repair ourselves and our beloved earth. Recycle, conserve water, conserve electricity, control population, plant more trees. For goddess sake, let us begin. Let's join together in hymn number 51, Lady of the Season's Laughter. Let's join together in the words for extinguishing the chalice, which are in your order of service. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Our benediction is, I who am the beauty of the green earth by Starhawk. Starhawk was a, a Unitarian Universalist. Earth mother, star mother. I read that one. 
got the wrong number. Sorry. It's still, the other one's still by Starhawk. So everything I said is true. I who am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon among the stars and the mysteries of the waters, I call upon your soul to arise and come unto me. For I am the soul of nature that gives life to the universe. From me all things proceed, and unto me they must return. Let my worship be in the heart that rejoices. For behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. Let there be beauty and strength, power and compassion, honor and humility, mirth and reverence within you. And you who seek to know me know that your seeking and yearning will avail you not unless you know the mystery. For if that which you seek you find not within yourself, you will never find it without. For behold, I have been with you from the beginning, and I am that which is attained at the end of desire.